My name is Edwin Landis. People in the sailing community know me as Eddie, and I have my captain's license now, so I guess I can be Captain Eddie. This is the schooner Pterodactyl, 42-foot JR Benford design, uh, concrete hull, everything else is wood. I always liked boats. I built my first boat at about eight, but it wasn't shapely, it was a sort of, it was square. No adults told me anything about it. I just was building it, and I thought that wood floated, so it would float. I didn't know about displacement or any of that. I built the thing. Every the neighborhood all around, Eddie's going to launch his boat. Put it on my wagon, took it down to the river. My mother made me a little bag to launch, and there were other and the na neighbors were down there and everything. And I said, "Okay, I'm gonna." take it out a little ways to come back and then I'll give everybody rides. And I stepped in it and instantly went right to the bottom and I'm up to my knees or so in the water standing on the bottom. It didn't even hesitate. It just went... That was my first boat. So in my second boat, I could bail... If I had another kid with me, I could bail fast enough to keep it afloat. And then I took it home and wrapped an old shower curtain around it, and it didn't leak anymore. It was great. So I was always into boats, loved boats, and building shacks and stuff, like things I could get inside of and everything. And I always liked to draw stuff. When I was a real little kid, I drew a bird. And I was trying to think, how do I make it look like it's flying? And I managed to riff, figure out how to make the wings up and make it look sort of three-dimensional. And since then, I always thought of it as a challenge to do it right. Eventually, I realized that that was my real calling, and I went to art school. It's kind of funny. I built my house, all my easels, my paint box, the boat, everything I built. And I draw it first. Like some things, I've made me draw them. 50 pictures before I come up with a way that would really work. This is the schooner rig with a midship's cockpit. After the cockpit, the deck comes up a little bit and continues back to the stern. That's a quarter deck. This boat has a quarter deck and we're on the quarter deck right now. These particular lines are lazy jacks. I just put these on. They're easy to put on, but when you lower the sail, it catches it. You don't ha have it falling all over. It saves so much work. I actually had a temporary hatch over this where the skylight is for years and years. Even though I made the frame for the skylight, I never finished it. So that's only been there for three years. Really makes a difference because, you know, it's pretty dark down below. These, I just put these rat lines. My daughter says I say ratlins, but I didn't learn boating from being with real boaters. I did it from books or just myself, so I don't use all the terms and everything. But I got this generator recently, and now I can work my power tools, everything right out here on my mooring. We have to take it off when we start taking people for rides. This year, we're gearing up to actually take people for rides. Schooner Pterodactyl Charters LLC. We're not totally ready yet, obviously, but that's what we're going to do. This is the main mast on Schooner. The bigger mast is aft. These masts are Sitka spruce. Most people have Douglas fir, very strong, but Sitka spruce is as strong, but way lighter. And that's the four mast there. I have my air-cooled diesel engine. I, instead of having like regular yachts, I have a stack like fish boats. I, like I said, I like work boats and tugs and all that. The engine room's right underneath here, so I got this little light. Every steel fitting, everything is just homemade. This is my old steering wheel. It actually, I need a new one now, finally. It's got like a chain in there. It's all stuff that I made. It's a, it's a little crude. This is very, very drakish. 
I have a hydraulic drive. It can creep. When I want it in neutral, I have to put this thing there. So you don't think you're, you don't put it in neutral and you're doing something, all of a sudden it's in gear going full bore. So <laughs> I had to put this thing on there. This is another example of real Drakeism. With, with the air cooled engine, it has to have good cool air going in. I think in the catalogs, those bronze air scoops are hundreds of dollars. I just went to Lowe's and got some uh, PVC. Tommy Drake built his own boats. He was a retired sailing ship captain. They called him the Lone Sea Rover. And he didn't set records. He just sailed and he built his boat, everything. Designed and built them. They're fairly crude in some ways, but functional, good boats. And I named my club after Tommy Drake, that whole attitude of making it seaworthy, functional, use what you got and go out there. The Tommy Drake Club, I'm the lifetime Commodore. You make your own bergie, you can use a sock, underwear, whatever you want. TDC, you write on there, put it on your starboard where you put your Yacht Club bergie. Okay, you're in. Make your bergie or whatever. It's the Drake attitude. And if something is drakish, well, it's functional and unpretentious. And, and if you think like that, you're a draker. Captain Tommy, the Lone Sea Rover, is my biggest hero. The main sheet for this sail comes here and goes up, down, and then you can control that right here. And for the four stay sail, And the main sheet's right here. So when you attack, the jib sheet goes on each side here, so you don't really have to go up there unless something's tangled up, which happens all the time. I've single-handed a lot. You just have to run back and forth. But it's doable. By having a schooner rig with four working sails, and I can put two other sails up, it divides the square footage in, so no sail has to be so big that it's unmanageable. And there's no winches, you notice? When you see Popeye the cartoon, you know, and he has those oversized forearms, there's a reason for that. Sailors are always gripping and pulling, so at least old-fashioned ones, unbelievably big forearms. I have this 100-pound fisherman anchor. It's unwieldy, but it holds. I have metal cable for my anchor. This is a six ton logging winch that I got second hand. It's real old. If you put the crank, it didn't, I didn't, I had to make my own crank. It, uh, I, it didn't come with one. Six of these cranks turns the drum once. But if you put it over here, it's something like 32 cranks. And this is a six ton winch. And, if you put it on that one, you can actually crank six tons. I got it fouled on some big thing underwater, and I'm cranking, you know, the bow's going down and down, and I'm just cranking away until I forget what it was. Some big thing finally came up. This is the four stay sail. I have the jib, and then I also have a flying jib, so there's three head sails if I want to have them. started building in, I guess it was 73. I was with my brother, Davey, my wife at the time, Victoria, and a schoolmate of my brother Davey's, Don Bevan, and my brother-in-law, Gene Riccio. We built the boat shed first, and that took over a month, probably. Although I had built lots of boats as a kid, I didn't really know even how to read boat prints or any of that. I send my money in a tube of Blueprints comes in the mail with all the lines and the details and stuff, but no instructions whatsoever. <laughs> I had to bone up. I had to get every book I could find and for us it meant it was new. A year later in March, it's ready for plastering. You can build the boat, your armature, your steel armature, as perfect as you want, but if you don't have it plastered right, you're screwed. Nobody's building them now has a bad reputation and no, not much resale value because a lot of people did such a poor job building them. But there were lots of good ones and this boat was plastered in 74 and here it is still 
working fine, you know. I'm, I'm happy with it. This is the galley. This is an old Washington Stove Works Neptune 15A, and it's got an oven. In hot weather, you can't do it. So I got this alcohol stove, and I made these gimbals. You can buy a gimbal thing for a hundred bucks, but I mean, so so when the boat's tilted, the uh, stuff on the stove stays level. For meals, we use eat burgoo, which is what Tristan Jones called the the one pot thing you just whatever you have and we just have a pressure cooker I have it in and we just lift it up so it won't slide out when the boat heals but so it won't come out but then you lift it and you got it I had a integral water tank and I I don't know I didn't like the idea of it so I took it out in the foot pump here to uh, for the water, but I have to make a new one, and obviously I, it's just um, this uh, fitting is just made out of copper pipe. That's drakish and that I like too. <laughs> you see all these bottles here, and think, boy, he drinks a lot of liquor. No, they're water from my well. For just drinking water, I just I like the well water. You know, I'm spoiled. The table, you can pull the pin and make it go down and you got a double berth there. But I couldn't get pipes that fit really snug, so I'm gonna to have to pad out the one pipe, see? But I, it's been this way forever. And I like it so if you can go back in there. You know. This is recycled wood too for, this is the typical thing. When it's really hot, we have all the utensils holding the uh, port lights open. And up here, which is catch-all right now, is the forecastle. It's got a double berth for a couple. It's definitely be pretty intimate. Then a single berth over here, uh, and I have ground tackle down under there, uh, rope, and storage up there. Here's that. I lost the little thing for that, but this is a... See, it's not working now, but this was the ship's horn. <laughs> and I used to have a knot meter. There was a little L tube with a cork in it, and you stuck it in the water, and there was calibrations on the uh, on the tube, and, it, and wherever the cork came to, it would tell you how fast you're going, six knots or whatever. I don't know what happened to that. I don't know if they have those anymore. Watch your head here. People have really gotten a bad rude awakening from that. This is the head, the bathroom. This is new too, it's a composting toilet. You uh, put this peat moss in it, you have to crank this, put it in the thing, crank it 15 times, that's your flushing. It's legal, that's, the, that's a legal thing. F cabin. I welded this thing up out of pipe. 40 years ago and it's still around too. And it heats it up really well. You gotta have musical instruments when there's no wind. That's what you use to call the wind. Storage, you know, I said, I, instead of having hinges, I made them like the old American Flyer wagons from when I was a kid. The double berth is really, really nice. I did my own steering too, and it's quite crude. Cables go through tubes underneath, and it comes in here, and I just made this emergency tiller. There's the wrench right there that you bolt it down with, and you can get it on there. And I'm gonna have a rope in here, and, and it's gonna go to pulleys here and here, and go up so I can uh, control it from up above. But anyway, and this is black locust. That's Wrong. So let's see, there's two, three, four. Somebody could sleep on each of these. There's six. Uh, the galley table could go down and uh, eight. And then three more up. So that if they're actually, you could sleep 
uh, 11 people, but that would be really tight. And who wants to have to lower the galley table and bring it up, you know? You want to go get a midnight snack or somebody in there laying on the table down. So that's not so cool. Hey, this is the chart table. You know, the charts and stuff are in here. <laughs> My sextant, nobody uses it. That, I actually used this going to Hawaii, uh, not on this boat, another one, but there was a other person who was the main navigator had a real sextant, but uh, I was pretty accurate with this thing. I don't remember how we're doing it. Now everybody's got satellite navigation, global positioning works great. My father-in-law gave me this for a uh, birthday or Christmas or something. Uh, a while ago, a couple years ago, and finally put it in. Uh, you know, the whole thing, Roger over and out, all that. I had never had any of that before. You just sort of think, hope they see you or whatever, and whatever they want to, <laughs> you can't talk to anybody. It's like, oh, well, I see you over there. And I'm pretty cool. I really like this design because I got my own shop. In the en Here's the engine, another Uncommon thing, an air-cooled Dodge diesel from Germany, uh, 1980. And I got the Spencer fluid power hydraulic system. And I got my vice and my, my complete shop here for doing everything. Port Townsend, come back, takes maybe 10 days. Or It feels like you really did a real experience. Time is way different. With a really good wind, really good wind, we can probably go about eight knots. It's just a different perspective and it's, it's healthful. And you just start, if you can boil it down, that's, that's it. Just try, just start. You can not have your exact plan for the rest of your life and never start. You, you just have to start. And that's my, that's the way I've done everything. And I th that would be my advice. Go for it. <laughs>